Today we're going to see what happens if we take a vacuum storage bag and hook it up to a pump that has way more power than a vacuum. Guys, I don't know if you've ever seen these vacuum storage bags before. I've seen commercials for them and them in stores quite a bit. I've never actually used one before, but I had a thought. I wanted to see just how they work and if we can sort of up the ante a little bit. I should point out, this is not a sponsored video. I have no allegiance to this magic bag brand. There's lots of brands out there. They all work pretty much the same way. These are just the ones that I bought at Walmart because I wanted to try this out. Most of the time, these bags work with a household vacuum or a shop vacuum. You put fluffy compressible things like clothing or blankets into them. It's got a one-way valve. Well, it occurred to me that we have some pretty powerful tools around the shop, something that can pull a lot more air than just a regular shop vacuum. We've got vacuum pumps. We've got a couple of them. This one right here, this is our Harvest Right vacuum pump. This thing is quite powerful, I think, and I wanted to see if there's a difference between just using our regular shop vacuum to pull air out and using our vacuum pump. And then I've got a few ideas for things that we want to try putting these bags that aren't exactly what the manufacturer recommends. Here's the basic idea. These storage bags are usually used with a household vacuum to make your bedding and clothing smaller. Well, we're going to try attaching it to our vacuum pump to see just how much air we can pull out of them. To start off though, we've got these ingredients over here. You may recognize these as the ingredients used for Proto Putty. Proto Putty is a mixture of silicone, a water-based activator, and some cornstarch to make it easier to manipulate. If you haven't seen this before, we've used this several times. We've got whole videos on how to make it. It just becomes a sculptable rubber that cures and then it's just solid but slightly squishy rubber forever. And I wanna try using some of that to make a seal for a vacuum pump. This already pulls pretty well if I just put it on my hand or this valve right here, but I wanna make sure it really gets a tight seal to suck out every last bit of air that we can get. So let's start mixing up some Proto Buddy. Now I've got food coloring and this serves two purposes. One, it adds a little bit of color to it, which is always nice, but very importantly, this food coloring is water-based and the silicone is activated by the water. The water is a very necessary step. In fact, you could use plain water with no food coloring and you'd get just sort of a, a translucent or clear or white Proto Putty. But we like to use the color because we can see how much we're putting in and it's easy to control in single drops. Now, if I just stirred this up and let it sit for a while, this will cure, this will turn into a Proto Putty, uh, but it's immensely sticky. This right now will stick to pretty much everything. It's really hard to work and shape. So what we use is cornstarch. You can use other things too. If you wanted to use like talcum powder, baby powder, which I think is mostly talcum powder, uh, you can do that as well. But we use cornstarch because it's cheap and it's, you know, it's edible. So it's pretty safe to have around. Just gonna pour a bunch of that in there. This will mix in. It will make it a little bit more opaque, but it'll also make it much, much easier to handle. It makes it less sticky. And so you have a chance to shape it. Even with the cornstarch though, it sometimes is helpful to just give it a little bit of time. It takes some time, a couple of minutes to really start curing with that water mixed in. And so if it's too sticky, sometimes the answer is more cornstarch, but if you've just been mixing it for only a minute, then the answer might just be to wait a little bit. And I should also warn you, mixing this stuff up puts off a very strong acetic acid smell. It's gonna smell like vinegar way more concentrated than an actual bottle of vinegar from the grocery store, it's pretty strong. So good ventilation is a good idea. While it's coated in cornstarch, it's not gonna be sticky. Once all the cornstarch gets mixed in, it will start sticking to my gloves again. There it is, it just goes everywhere. You know what, I already have a vacuum right next to me, so that's all right. This doesn't actually leak much air. Once it presses down, this, so this brass collar actually moves up and down, and once it's pressed down, it doesn't leak anymore. It forms a tight seal, but because we're not screwing this on to a flange or a valve or anything like that, uh, it does have a little more flexibility, so we're just gonna throw this on just to make sure we've got a nice tight seal on it. Okay, we've got a couple of decently large blankets and a very large bag. I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to fit both of these in here, but I'm gonna try. And then we're gonna see how flat they squish just using the regular vacuum before we move on to using the vacuum pump. I am probably exceeding the recommended total amount being put into this bag right now. Aha! 
All right, now, let's see if I can seal this off properly. This isn't a zipper that opens one way and closes the other. It's just a little tool to help you close down the two zip points. All right, here goes. All right, I think that has stopped moving. That's pretty dense. I'm gonna be interested to see how much more this can pull out because that seems like it's pulled out quite a bit. It's definitely flatter and skinnier and uh, may add some unintended wrinkles into things, but for storage, it's not bad. We've got our suction cup. Should just fit nicely on there, make a nice tight seal. Turn this on. It's uh, ugh, certainly suctioning well to my hand. Probably just gave myself a hickey in the middle of my palm. Oh, that is still getting a lot flatter. That is pulling out a lot more air. <laughs> so I'm gonna say, yeah, we've got a lot more suction power in that than with our regular vacuum cleaner. Oh my gosh. I just wanna let more air back in and watch it go. Okay, I'm gonna try and just break the seal here, open the zipper and just have all that air rush in all at once. Here it goes. That's fun to watch. So we know that the vacuum pump pulls a lot harder than our vacuum cleaner, and we, uh, we've seen what it can do to a pair of blankets. It shrinks them down, it's basically a board. But we're not just gonna do this with blankets. We've got some other things we wanna try this with. Uh, let's see, I think first off, I have a couple marshmallows. I like these ones, you can eat them like an apple. Marshmallows make a really tight seal once they smush themselves together. So it's not really able to pull more air out than that. Although I don't think there's much air in there except inside the confines of the marshmallows themselves. It's kind of just making a, an interesting texture there too. Have you ever seen those gel-like pillows? I'm just gonna do this a quick little test. Oh, that's not bad. It's pretty good. It's also really nice for a good late night snack. You're just like, oh man, I could go for a marshmallow. Next up, we've got, oh, about two gallons of Orbeez here, and we're gonna, we're gonna see what happens if we try and vacuum these. This will be interesting. That pulled in water pretty quick, and then it started pulling in Orbeez. We managed to pull in some Orbeez sludge into our hose here. Don't think they got so far as to actually get into the vacuum. So that didn't last very long, but we do have one more thing we're gonna try with that. We're gonna use the shop vac, and it's a wet, dry shop vac, so if that gets a little bit of water in it, it's not gonna cause any problems. It's not gonna pull as hard, but at least it's not gonna get Orbeez stuck inside our nice, expensive vacuum pump. So let's try this. <laughs> Orbeez, full of water, large and non-compressible. Marshmallows, full of air, unfortunately non-porous, but we do have one more thing that we wanna try that's mostly full of air and I think is fairly porous. It should smash down quite a bit. We're gonna use one of our big bags again. This time we're gonna start with the vacuum cleaner again, our shop vac, just because there's a good chance that some of this popcorn could get crumbled up or the airflow going out could pull lots of little bits into it and that's fine with the shop vac. Again, we don't want that to happen with the vacuum pump but I'm hoping that after it compresses down, there will be less of that dust and we can move on to using that. But let's see how squished it gets with just our shop vacuum. This is already quite entertaining. Um, there's there's no flexibility to this at this point. All the air's been pulled out enough that like even though this is just single 
pop kernels of popcorn, like there's no bending. They're just pressed together so tight. Listen to that. That's the sound of popcorn. All right, let's, let's try and kick this up a notch and see what's gonna happen. Hopefully we don't end up pulling a lot of popcorn dust into our pump. Here goes. I can hear all the popcorn getting crushed. I gotta try something. This feels very sturdy, much more sturdy than popcorn traditionally is. Yeah, it's barely, like it's not moving and it's barely making any noise even, like. I wonder if you can use this to just sneak your own popcorn into a theater. Maybe I should have used the medium sized bag. Guys, popcorn does compress down a little bit. All the air gets pulled out and it just becomes really immobile and rigid, which I thought was pretty cool. That really had a lot of strength to it. I was able to stand on it like well. It didn't even seem like it was moving or shifting. Guys, if you have any ideas of things you'd like to see us try putting in these vacuum bags, let us know down in the comments. And you can actually add a hashtag. So we're gonna use hashtag vacuum bag. If you use that, we should be able to search and find it and find all of the things that link to the video. So let us know if you've got some ideas. Guys, some of our favorite projects are about to become available as kits in a monthly subscription. Click the link down below to be the first to find out what's coming. Guys, we've always got more for you. See the box up there at the top is gonna take you directly to our last video. You can go check that out. The other box shows you what YouTube thinks you should be watching next. That's probably a good one too. And if you hit this bomb here in the middle, you'll be subscribed to the channel. That way you're never gonna miss a cool video, especially if you remember to ring that bell so you get the notification about it. We'll see you in the next one. Talk to you then.